So the essence of this particular demonstration is to show how color looks different on four different color papers. This one is the multimedia art board that I'll be using, and I have some of that right here. And then the other paper that I'm using is the Canson paper. And by quickly glancing at it, you really can't tell. One side is very textured, and the others are smoother. So to define that, what I'm going to do is uh, create a barrier or a border to test and show you a palette of colors that look very different. I've also caught and made a catch tray here so when the dust is falling, it's not falling into my box of pastels. And a lot of pastels neglect that. I'll be using some water only on this to dissolve it, so I'm going to put that over there and add water to it. So I know the things that are being used. And next, I will be gathering brushes before when I get to the stage of dissolving on here. We can also use alcohol for pastel to dissolve it, but I prefer to use water. Alcohol would be good if it was really humid. It would help it speed up the dry. So I'm setting up my stations. I'm getting ready. The last thing that I need are some paper towels because as you're working with your pastels, you need to be able to wipe off the pastel. It picks up other colors. I'm very right-handed, so I use my right hand to draw with. I keep the paper towels in my left to wipe off the color if it picks up an accumulation. So the next thing I'm going to do is get a tray that I'll put my limited palette of colors in. And in pastels, there's a couple of things that you really need to pay attention to. One is the smoothness or the textured surface of the paper. Pastels are meant to stick to the paper. They're made of pure pigments. It's the finest pigments that go into watercolors and oil paints, but they're in a dry state and compressed together. They range from soft to hard. So in terms of the surface of the paper so that you can see the texture, this is the sanded paper. This is a textured paper. You'll be able to see the different textures of the paper. It shows up a little better maybe with the black and everyone else can come over and take a peek at this if you can't see it at a distance because this is going to make sense. So depending on the tooth and the texture of the paper, that's how pastels build and lay, land and stay on it. The more texture, the more layers that you can build. But the Canson actually holds a decent amount of pigment. I worked on it exclusively for 15 years and I fell in love with it. And that, the color surfaces are what influenced my mindset of what to put on my oil canvases as far as toning it. So in terms of this experiment for pastels, you can think in terms of, well, what if I had a really dark canvas that I'm painting, or straight up white, or if I toned it in kind of a neutral gray, or a bright orange, and a lot of you are using this kind of fleshy color. Here's my tray. So my goal right now is to pick out a selection of colors that are both in hard pastels, and the harder generally the skinny ones, and or soft pastels, which are less binder, more pigment, and, and creamier. And the soft ones range from really buttery ones that are just, you barely touch the paper, and the tooth of the paper will just suck it up and take it. And then everything in between, and then the hard pastels. I use Jack Richardson hard pastels, the signature set that I have is Jack Richardson. They're just exquisite pastels. But within my box here, I have 30 some years of pastels that have been collected in probably 10 different companies. And each does a very different thing. Another pastel that I'll be adding to my repertoire of colors is one of these harder, past actually soft pastels made by Jack Richardson that are big chunks and blocks. I'm gonna throw that in there and I'll also grab a hard one. So what I'm trying to do is grab similar colors in a soft pastel and a hard pastel that I will use in my experiment to take across here. I'm gathering it right now, kind of randomly just picking a few colors that I think will work for me. Uh, we're doing a big sky, hmm, imagine that sky. <laughs> and also uh, the landscape. 
And as I, as I work along, in this experiment, you can add things to it as you go along. So I could have done this before you came in, but I'm doing it in front of you and trying to show an example of a way to begin a pastel out in nature plein air. If you're working plein air and you've got 400 pastels, 100 pastels in front of you, it's best to just limit your palette. The same thing with oil paintings. We, we put out maybe eight tubes of paint and we make many, many colors. In pastels, what we have to do is layer the colors. Generally, it's better not to blend with our fingers. We can do that if we want to fill the tooth of the paper. But you can also blend by taking color over the top of color and blending it by the stick going over top of the stick. Okay, I'm almost ready to start. I have a limited palette and I can add to it later. This is going to be sort of my subject, basically big sky, low horizon, but I'm not gonna to adhere to that particular drawing or photo. It's just more important to have something so you can see as a visual. And I'll begin to block it in. So let's see, I, I know I wanna have a mountain down through here and I'm just simply gonna work my way across all four surfaces. So let's see here. You can't even see that dark on the dark, but when you come across here and go across there, you immediately see how very, very different a single color looks on four different surfaces. Let's go ahead and begin to really throw in some pastel. So let's say I'm doing one of the, the mountains here of the big valley. And the harder I push on this, those of you that can't see, you might want to swing over this way or stand up. The harder I push, the more it fills the tooth and the texture and the paper. Let's do that down here. If I push really hard, I can almost get a black and I can also float it across there over top of that other part and it begins to blend it. So there you are, you've got all these different variables already with your pastel. When we're working on the more textured surface, which is what this one is here, it, it basically can handle a lot more pastel However, it takes a lot more work to get the tooth and the texture filled. I think Linda was working with that. So if I, if I want to really fill it in, I could use my finger. You can also use other kinds of tools to blend it in there. But I prefer not to work on the textured one, but to work on the smoother surfaces. Initially, we might think that it won't hold enough pastel, but it really, really does. And the only way to find out is to experiment with that. So I actually have little scraps of the paper that you can try later on. Let's go ahead and just play around here. And this is going to be a very simple, simple beginning pastel. Now I don't have the tape under that one and it will fall down here and I don't want to make a big mess. So I'm going to go ahead and do it over here as well because I'm trying to work quickly across all of them basically just to create this kickstart situation where you grasp the basics of pastels. And this is a terrific visual that gives you the gist of how they work. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and begin to think about the sky. I want to throw a dark blue into here. I'm just going to have a sweeping cloud. So the, the black you can barely see. And over here on the orange, it becomes pretty clear. And here's the textured one. So the same blue going across the three different papers looks very, very different. I'll tell you, I'm going to have to work a lot harder and push a lot harder to get the tooth and the texture of the paper to fill. And over here, on the white multimedia, I'll be dissolving that in a few minutes, but I'm going to save that towards the end. So I don't want to put quite as many layers over on that one because if we have multiple colors and then we dissolve them, the pigments will merge together and maybe turn gray. So you have to thoughtfully think different with your different 
paper surfaces. Okay, next, let's see. Let's go ahead and try a soft pastel combined with a hard pastel and sort of start to lock in the mountain. It's a hard pastel you're using. This is a hard pastel, yes, made by Jack Richardson. When do you decide to use the soft or the hard? Generally, I, I do my entire beginning layout with the hard mm -hmm. because my goal is not to fill the tooth of the paper in the beginning. I want to work my way up to the softer pastels. Uh, but if you don't have the color you want in the hard, then you know you can still inter mix it in there. But I suggest when you're working with the softer ones, not to push as hard so it doesn't fill the tooth and the texture of the paper. And I'm wiping off on here as I work. I don't need as many of those. I can use just a single one. If I wanted to uh, protect my hands, I could go ahead and use something that's called gloves in a bottle and you pull that out. A lot of pastels will work with actual gloves, but I don't particularly like to. I did put a little bit of this on and it, it dries like, uh, it, it looks like a hand cream, but it's water soluble and it dries very quickly and you don't even feel it's on your hands and it helps you wash the pastel off. Kind of mimic the same design across all three of these. And it'll take a little while for things to begin to emerge, but it's it's really delightful to be able to see the contrast between the, the two papers. Here I'm actually able to take the softer over top of the hard and begin to blend it a little bit because now there's enough pigment to blend on top of the pigment. And I think I'll, I'll begin to work in a little more of the blue. I think a darker blue would be a good idea. I have a lot of blues in here. Let's try this one. And the softer. And sometimes it's really fun to allow some of the under color of the paper to show through because when you think about it, part of the color scheme and the mood of what you're creating is the actual paper or color surface. So a lot of artists in oil painting might cover the entire surface, but that initial color of the paper establishes a mood. So for example, if I was painting a sunset, this might be a really good choice to select because it already has the warm hues of the sky that we would be anticipating. Perhaps we would choose this gray for the, the foggy morning that we saw this morning. And the white, you have a lot of opportunity to do what you want to do. Down in here is going to be a field, and I'm going to use some dynamic copper colors. So, let's see here, dynamic copper. Great oranges and such of this. Okay, so I'm thinking in reverse. Instead of going straight to the greens, I'm going to throw in that's really red. That's a little brighter than what I wanted. Let's go like this. Again, remember, part of this demo is to show you the how different things look on each on each paper. How very different they look. So when you drop your pastel on the floor, it cracks. So <laughs> try not to do that. Uh, so I just used a soft pastel, and this is a harder one. I'm trying to make some textures in the field, in a distant field also. But look how different that looks going across the papers. It's just so amazing to me that when you're using a different color paper with a single same pastel, how very, very different it can look. Now imagine, those of you that are oil painters, how you could possibly uh, take this to your advantage and try something.
So now you can see I'm beginning to add a lot more colors into this. And so you can begin to develop the repertoire of colors. Let's see here. Uh, Debbie, how, how can you translate this to the medium that you work in? You work in oils. Um, it is interesting to see it on the different colors. I mean, that, the uh, different color paper would be a different color tone for me. Um, and a different feel when you get to the, the colors you're, you're putting your colors on top. Okay. And how much shows through and how much. Have you ever worked on a black surface before? No. Okay. Um, I know a lot of. I know one ocean painter in particular that works on block, and it's really phenomenal how dynamic it makes their, their work appear. Um, now, I'm not paying a particular attention about you know, perfection and things here, but I'm going to step back to look at what this is looking like, okay? It's still very indistinct. Uh, and so I'm asking myself, well, how do I want to try to clarify this? If this is a mountain, Let's establish horizon, but that's too tiny of a piece. I'm gonna to have to get a bigger piece. Uh, and I'm looking for a particular color, but I'm not gonna to be too persnickety. I'm just gonna keep working for you guys. The goal is to be fast and to try to show something interesting here that locks into your mind about the understanding of color going across color and how simultaneously a single color can look very different in a, in a slightly different color environment. It takes on a personality and a mood. Now, when we're working on a black surface, remember that the black is the darkest dark of the color that you'll ever get. And the only way to keep that dark dark is not to push so hard with your pastel so that it, it sits on top and doesn't fill the tooth and the texture. So. You know, you think maybe that you need to push harder to get the darker color, but if I push harder, I actually remove it and take the black away. Uh, you know, would I want to maybe do some blending? I could do that. So doing this little experiment with the different color papers is really a big game changer in gaining knowledge and understanding about color in a short and quick experiment. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here before I go back and start to work on this a little more. I'm going to pull out my water, my little tableau of water, and a couple of brushes here to begin to wet that so that you can see how the pastel dissolves and merges together. But it also needs time to dry before I apply subsequent layers of pastel on it. If you put a, a dry pastel stick into the pastel that's wet, you got a problem. Now, some artists do that on purpose, but I'm gonna use two brushes. I need more pigment, let's do this. I need a little more pigment to dissolve. So before I get it too wet, I'm gonna do that. Okay. So when you're working on the multimedia artboard, you can actually move your brush around and try to create some atmosphere of your pastel uh, being dissolved. So if I'm working with a cloud, I wanna to try to think about the way a cloud might look. And some of these pastels you're gonna find have more pigment and they dissolve more than others do. And one way to experiment with that would be to have a little sidebar where you can test it. All right. Now I'm gonna take a different brush because I'm not working with the blues, I'm going to work with uh, probably the oranges. So when I come down into the field here, what I want to do is try to take this brush and mimic a field of wheat or grasses rather than going, ch -ch 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 -ch, you know, all exactly the same way. I'm trying to create some kind of a textural movement that will emulate nature and grasses. So you can do this with your own oil brush, you know, when you're when you're toning or, or blocking things in. 
And I do know that when the pastel's wet, it's going to be much darker. When it dries, it will dry lighter, just like kind of a theory of watercolor as it dries. Now I can wipe this off and maybe merge some of these greens. And they're not dissolving as well as the orangey one did. Go into the mountain now. So I'm working from certain colors so they don't get muddy and not using the same brush for them. And this looks almost black, so I have blended sort of a, a purple and uh, a green. And I can take some of that pastel and maybe drag it down into this field if I want to. So the pastel becomes a dissolved pigment that is almost like a paint. Very, very different thing happening. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and go back over here. I don't particularly like working on the textured surface, so I'm gonna focus on these two here, this one in particular. I'm gonna take my wet rag and put that away and go ahead and get a dry paper towel so that I can wipe off my pastels at work. So we're going to spend about five more minutes just trying to lock things in and build layers so that you get an understanding of how you can build pastels. I wonder if this mountain begin to look like the mountain that I see off in the distance. So there's pops of this orange coming through, and I can save that and work with that. Over here, the pastel that's falling down is laying on top of the dark. So in terms of working on a really dark paper, it's a good idea in pastels to start at your top and work your way down. Because if you, let's say we, if we completely develop the mountain right there, uh, and then try to do the sky, the sky colors are gonna drop down and fall into it. You can take care of that problem by altering your easel and maybe tilting it like this so that gravity has to fall straight down as opposed to onto the paper. Some people work flat. If you work flat, all the dust accumulates and you have to tap it off. So I like working upright, and as you can see, there's a lot of dust falling down into there. So let's, this has this orangey paper there, and I don't think I want it completely shown through. So the harder I push, the darker it's going to get. And I can begin to drag some of this over the light. So you can take light over dark, dark over light. You can build many, many layers. And I'm going to change up and work into the sky here a little bit, trying to lock this mountain. So it's it's beginning to, to layer and get a mood there. Let's jump down into this area here and pretend that there's some trees in the foreground. The edge of the field, maybe. And the harder I push, the richer and darker and more opaque the pastel becomes. Let's try this big purple pastel. So purple and orange really do an interesting blend. Now these are meant to like really block in the entire area. And if you think about the big ones, it becomes like a really big brush if, you need, if you're working on a larger scale. But I like this particular color. I'm going to throw it into where the trees are. Let's pop over here and see how dark that looks on the gray. That's really interesting. And what happens over here? Is this dry? That's still wet. I'm not going over there. But these have not been wet. Let's see what happens with the black paper. It does actually stand out pretty well. That's interesting. Let's see what happens in here. Let's ask ourselves some questions. Uh, can we put a lighter light on there? What will happen? Hmm. That doesn't quite do what I want it to do. So let's find a really creamy, soft, light white. This is a, another lighter white. That one yes. jumps right in there and really does what I want it to do, which is sit on top and, and cover the dark. But I can go back in and I can put some of the harder pastels over if I want to to blend it. So now I've almost totally lost the black on the paper there, which is kind of interesting. And I can begin to 
dance that across if I want, I can go ahead and smudge it, but I, I tend to not want to smudge with my finger because it crushes the pigment and makes it muddy. Let's see what happens when we take lighter colors. And this is still very, very wet. Okay, so what do we learn from that? If I wanted that to speed up drying, I'd have to take it out and put it in the sun, put a hair dryer on it. Or if I wanted it to be even faster, which is what I did when I did a video that had to be live, I used alcohol. Um, but when I'm at, generally when I'm outside, I find that the water works just fine, and I, I don't always think to bring the alcohol along. So one more minute, and then I'm going to stop. So if I take this same white that I worked on there, and I take it across here. I can bury this in really light glazing if I want, or I can push it really hard across there. So a single pastel can have a completely different mood on paper. We can build subsequent layers to create a really powerful texture. It's not the color I want. Let's, let's go with that. So this is my kickstart kick demo on a multiple image composition study with simultaneous color. So I think I've accomplished what I wanted to, helping you guys understand how one color looks very different on many colors. Different surface textures, where you can wet a paper, those that you can't, and how color does influence the final result. Uh, they got a long way to go, but, a good kickstart demo. Mm -hmm. Woo!